What if you wake up one morning and found out that all the trees are cut, the water is green and foaming, undesirable for human consumption, the air is thick with smug and difficult to breathe in, the weather is not what it used to be, heavy rains and typhoons happen during summer, and very hot weather during cold seasons. The quality of the environment has a huge impact in humans. That is why we learn environmental science. Today, we're going to learn the nature or scope and goals of environmental science. In this lesson, we're going to define what environment is, understand that environmental science is interdisciplinary, understand why natural resources are important, understand what sustainability and conservation is, describe the nature or scope of environmental science. So what is an environment? It is all that is around us. External conditions influencing the development of people. It may be physical, social or psychological. Animals, plants, living and working conditions. It is basically the sum total of all conditions. So which environment do you like to live in? Why did you choose that environment? Would you rather choose A or would you rather choose B? Truthfully, the Earth as a planet can live on its own, even without people in it. In fact, it is the humans or communities which we call the society who lives on the planet and who cannot survive well enough if something goes wrong with it. We have heard slogans of save our planet, protect wildlife, prevent climate change, reduce, reuse, recycle, and so on. Actually, what do you think should the slogan be? Humans are part of nature and exist within the environment. Survival heavily depends on a healthy planet with its natural systems functioning properly. So what is environmental science? It is the study of how the natural world works, our interaction with the living and non-living things, and its effect on our society and vice versa. Environmentalism or environmental activism is a social movement dedicated to protecting the natural world. It is very different from environmental science, wherein when environmental problems happen, it gives people with different disciplines to come together to act on finding solutions to fix a problem. We get the attention of climatologists, paleoclimatologists, glaciologists, atmospheric chemists, oceanographers, botanists, marine biologists, computer scientists, and many others working in institutions all over the world. Natural resources are critical to human survival. It occurs naturally in the environment and is necessary. Renewable resources are all throughout available. They can renew themselves in a short period of time. However, they can be destroyed. Non-renewable resources can be exhausted or consumed. Examples of natural resources under renewable resources are as follows. Wind power and solar energy, water resources, land resources, animal resources, and forest resources. Non-renewable resources include crude oil, natural gas, precious metals, minerals, and rocks. Now let's talk about the scope of environmental science. It includes the four major segments. These are the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere. The atmosphere acts as a protective blanket of gases covering the Earth. It sustains life on Earth, 
It protects it from the hostile outer space objects. It absorbs most of the cosmic rays from outer space and a major portion of the electromagnetic radiation from the sun. It transmits here ultraviolet visible near-infrared radiation and radio waves while filtering out tissue-damaging ultraviolet waves below about 300 nanometers. The atmosphere is composed of 78 nitrogen and 21% oxygen, besides argon, carbon dioxide, and trace gases, which comprises 1% of the atmosphere. The hydrosphere comprises all types of water resources like oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, streams, reservoirs, polar ice caps, glaciers, and groundwater. 97% of the Earth's water supply is in the oceans. About 2% of the water resources are found in the polar ice caps and glaciers. About 1% of surface freshwater is available as rivers, lakes, streams, and groundwater fit to be used for human consumption and other uses. The lithosphere is the outer mantle of the solid earth. It consists of minerals occurring in the earth's crust and the soil. Examples are the biosphere minerals, indicates the realm again, of matter, all living things, air and water, and their interaction with environment via atmosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere. Society keeps on demanding the use of natural resources. That is why some civilizations invade cities or countries. Do you remember why Spain invaded the Philippines? In your Aralin Palipunan studies or social studies, it was said that in those times, Europe wanted to be the richest continent and it was the height of trading among countries. They wanted to have the natural resources found in the Philippines, like spices, gold, timber, and others. That is only one of the reasons why they came. Some civilizations fall due to the lack thereof. Just like how the Mayan civilization near the Mexican Gulf disappeared, perhaps due to the lack of potable water resources during drought. Environmental science can help us prevent errors done by the past civilizations because the environment impacts humans and humans impact the environment. The goal of environmental science is to develop solutions to environmental problems. First, we study how the natural world works. Education creates environmental awareness among people. That is why environmental education is taught in schools. Create environmental science programs for the conservation and sustainability of the environment. So what is sustainability and conservation? As you all know, sustainability is the guiding principle of environmental science. It is a process or action which society avoids the depletion of the natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance so that the quality of life does not decrease among society. Conservation is the preservation, protection, and conservation of animal and forest resources. Whenever you think about environmental science, always think about the solutions we can make to improve our daily living. I hope you have learned something from today's lesson. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. This is Teacher Shem. Have a good day.